Hello everyone, my name's Annika Rice. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be telling you your bedtime story tonight. And I'm particularly thrilled because I'm gonna be telling you a story that my mum used to tell me, she made it up. And then I told the same stories to my children, made up some more, told them to other people's children. Frankly, anybody's children that I could find got to hear about these five little pigs called Belchy, Squelchy, Porky, Squealy, and gulch. And that's what this story is about. Because once upon a time, there were these five little pigs. Look, I'll show you. Their names were Belchy, Squelchy, Porky, Squealy, and Gulch. Now, Belchy and Squelchy were twins. They were seven. They couldn't have been more different. Squelchy was a sensible pig. He was kind and steady. But his brother Belchy was very naughty. Didn't mean to be. It's just he did things without thinking them through, especially if they looked fun. Then Belchy wanted to dive right in, and he often did. Literally, he once dived into a river to rescue his baby brother's toy lamb and got swept half a mile downstream. So you can imagine what it was like being Belchy's mum. She spent most of the week having a heart attack. Anyway, the next little piggy was Porky. He was four, a cheerful and very greedy pig, always the first to get to the table at tea time and always the last to leave. He hated waste and would finish up every last scrap off everybody else's plates. He said he was being an eco-warrior. He said that waste was bad and that everything was better off in his stomach. Squealy. There was the baby and you might have clocked the name. Yes, he squealed a lot. He woke up and squealed. He went into the garden and squealed. He squealed at lunchtime and he squealed all afternoon. Everyone got used to it. He was just a squealer. And lastly, Gulch. I love Gulch. Look, there's Gulch. He was five. He was an odd little pig and always came at the end of the family list. So we've got Belchy, Squelchy, Porky, Squealy and Gulch. And Gulch, you see, he's at the end, even though he wasn't even the youngest. He liked nothing more than to grow things, sunflowers, hollyhocks, mint. The garden exploded with things he growed. He, he tilled, he hoed, he weeded. He wasn't bothered at all about what was going on around him. He did his own thing. That's why he had an exclamation mark after his name, because he was an unusual pig and very tall for his age. It wasn't just his plants that were growing. Anyway, on to the story. Here we go. One day, Mummy Pig made an announcement at breakfast. It's sports day at school tomorrow, everyone. I want you all to get up bright and early in time to have a huge breakfast. Well, the pigs were so excited. They loved sports day. Belchie went very quiet, though. He remembered last year when his brother beat him in all the races and even Gulch, two years younger, beat him in the egg and spoon. So when Belchy woke up the next morning and all the little pigs were buzzing around excitedly looking for their running shoes while Mummy Pig made a huge breakfast, Belchy made a plan. Suddenly, he got out of bed, he ran into Mummy Pig's bedroom, grabbed her lipstick and painted tiny pink blobs on his neck. Two minutes later, he was back in bed and groaning loudly. Oh! So when Mummy Pig came in to check on him, she was horrified to find that Belchy must have chicken pox. You poor darling, she cried as she soothed his brow. You're missing your favourite breakfast, eggy bread, so I know you must be really unwell. Stay there, and as soon as I'm back from taking your brothers to school, I'll come and sort you out. Well, Belchy was dismayed. He'd forgotten it was eggy bread for breakfast, his favourite he heard his brothers leave for school and suddenly felt very sad and alone in the empty house. Why had he done such a stupid thing? He could have had eggy bread and the sports day buns. He was missing those two pink icing always and cherries on top, sometimes two each. He put his hands on his head and thought, what am I doing? Suddenly, he heard a noise. Click. Someone was opening the front door very carefully and very slowly. He sat bolt upright, his heart beating. He got out of bed, crept to his bedroom door, took a look down the stairs. 
Now, one thing I haven't told you yet about Belchi, he's a very brave pig. I mean, you or I would have just hidden under the bed, but Belchi cautiously tiptoed to the top stairs and looked down. Two men were creeping down the hall. Belchi could look right down on top of them. One was so tall he was crouching to miss the ceiling light. He wore a baseball cap crammed tightly over his head. So all Belchi saw was a slogan that said, have a nice day in bright green. The other man had long tangly hair and a ponytail. It looked like a straggly mop was shuffling through the hall. The baseball cap man whispered, bound to be in the shed at the back, we'll grab it and then straight out of here. I reckon we've got 10 minutes before anyone's back. Well, by now Belch's heart was thudding so hard he could barely hear his thoughts, let alone collect them. What could he do? Those men were twice his size and they looked mean. But he crept downstairs, pressing his body tightly against the wall. The men had walked along the hall to the kitchen Belchie saw the tall one take a slice of eggy bread from the kitchen table. He felt his heart lurch with love. Mummy Pig had obviously left that out for him. He felt like lunging at the men and stopping them then and there. But they piled on through the back door into the garden. They were heading for the garden shed. Belchie reckoned this meant one thing. They were going to steal their new lawnmower. Mummy Pig was more proud of this than anything else at the moment. Or without thinking, he scuttled after them, darting behind the tall hollyhocks, lining the garden path. The men looked quickly around and darted into the shed. But Belchie was on fire. With one strong move, he slammed the shed door shut behind the men. Before they could work out why they were suddenly in the pitch black, Belchie dragged a huge plant pot in front of the door and jumped in. The men inside hammered on the door in fury, but the combination of Belchi and the pot was formidable. They were trapped. Look, there's a picture. There's Belchi in the pot, you see? That's blocking the door from opening. And it seemed to Belchi that he stood in that pot for hours. His head was exploding with fear. The pot rocked from side to side as the robbers hammered on the door. Belchi was terrified the robbers would topple him over and open the door. He nearly fainted with relief when he saw Mummy Pig wander into the garden, having dropped the piglets off at school. She saw Belchie in a pot by the garden shed. She'd left him in bed with chicken pox. Even for Belchie, this seemed rather naughty. Belchie, what on earth are you doing? Quick, get the police, shouted Belchie. There are men in the shed stealing our lawnmower. Well, Mummy Pig rushed inside and telephoned the police. Within minutes, two strong policemen rushed through the garden to the shed, just in time. The pot with Belchie in it was lurching dangerously from side to side. Belchie was hanging on for dear life. He was not going to let anyone get his mother's precious lawnmower. What can I say? When it was all over and the police had marched the men away in handcuffs, Mummy Pig gave Belchie the biggest hug. She noticed that the chicken pox spots seemed to have rubbed away in the excitement, but she didn't say anything about it. You're so brave, Belchie, but you're also so naughty for not going to school today. <laughs> I know, sobbed Belchie. I'm proud and cross all at the same time, said Mummy. I know, sobbed Belchie. When the others came home from sports day, oh, there was such a celebration tea. Squelch had won the running race, Gulch had won the egg and spoon, Porky had eaten a lot of ice buns, but the real star was Belchie. He had saved the day. Mummy Pig's pride and joy, her new lawnmower, was safely at the end of the garden. Well, tea that day was so special. There was eggy bread piled high, yellow and crusty, but also cracked meringues bulging with soft cream and tiny sweet strawberries, sticky, brittle brandy snaps, chocolate cake flooded with molten chocolatey goo. Everyone wanted to hear the story over and over again. They marvelled at Belch's courage. They couldn't believe how he'd been able to move that massive pot on his own. Mummy Pig said it was amazing what you could do if you were really determined. The piglets were surprised the chicken pox epidemic was over so quickly. Mummy Pig said it had been a particularly mild bout. Later that night, she gave Belchie an extra long nighttime tickle on his back. She wanted to explain how being hasty often led to heartache and trouble. And she sang two songs instead of the normal one. Belchie was almost asleep. Belchie, do you promise you'll never be naughty again, said Mummy Pig. 
I promise, said Belchie. And do you think he will?